Did you boogie? Yeah. Let's go. Oh. I gotta get my mask from the car. Another day. We're all covered in dust. I'm taking Liam to kindergarten and I'll take you around for a walk around the neighborhood. Oops, I just dropped my glasses. Oh, I got your dotty mask here too. You wanna change it? Yeah, wanna change it? <laughs> I did it. You did it? Fantastic, let's go. Dotty! <laughs> Sometimes we do this thing with Liam where we pretend to be horses. Lay in the horse. Stop horse. Not horse? Stop horse. Stop horse. Stop horse. Bye buddy. Korean neighborhoods tend to be pretty self-contained for the most part. Wherever you live, there's always stuff around. Small neighborhoods with uh, that are jam-packed with apartment blocks and businesses of all kinds. There's a little market. I'm gonna go across the street. I'll show you the Courtheart house that's located just across the street in my favorite chicken place that we often go visit. The court house is just over that way. And there's a lady selling yogurt. Green light. This is by far my favorite chicken place. If you're ever in the neighborhood, I'd suggest come down here and visit it. It's not a chain. Not a franchise, a lone standing uh, business run by this middle aged lady who's very friendly. Uh, we go there quite frequently, and uh, she's got really cheap french fries two dollars, two bucks for french fries for a big plate of french fries, which is really unusual in Korea because most businesses, whenever you go to a restaurant outside of the fast food places, whenever you go to a restaurant and you order, you know, french fries as a side dish. Some places will charge us as high as nine dollars or nine thousand one. This place makes them for two thousand on a big plate. You get your choice of either ketchup, your other cheesy oniony sprinkly stuff, flavoring if you want that. And then the chicken is also reasonably priced. I think it's about ten thousand to thirteen thousand for for an order. And you can have your hot, spicy, and the regular one, and it's very nice and crispy. Tastes fresh and uh, yummy. Come down here in Old Tong, in Old Sun. You look just around here, the closer we get to the courtrooms, the more businesses and law offices pop up. Further up the hill, right in front of it, the neighborhood is just swarmed with lawyers and legal advisors and whatnot. That's the courtroom. And it's literally a walking distance from my house. Uh, which is probably partially the reason for why the rental prices here in this, in, in this neighborhood are so high. Look at that! They're building a happy youth center. I wonder if that's a happy center or a center for happy youth. And people say Korean economy is starting to stagnate. That's the case. What's going on with all these new buildings jumping up left and right? This whole mask thing is bothering me seriously. And I think it's getting to a lot of people too. Uh, I had a discussion on Facebook with somebody who... Uh, they got angry with me for saying that knowing that other countries like Bangladesh and India and Pakistan have a have air pollution that is a lot worse than not in Korea. You know, I said that it doesn't really make me feel any better. And I wasn't trying to suggest that uh, they were insinuating that this should make you feel better. So I said it doesn't make me any feel, feel any better because, you know, this doesn't improve my situation. And now I, while I sympathize with the people that live in those countries with crappy air, there's nothing I can do about that. There's nothing I can remedy. But here, in my own situation, there are things that I can do in order to improve it. Like one, 
would I guess be to leave the country which again is just a thoughtless thing to say because as I mentioned I'm not 20 years old I can't just pick up and leave the country <clears throat> I've got a business, I've got a family, there are ties here that keep me here in Korea. It's like being back home and just, nobody just picks up one day and decides the next to leave. It's not a decision anybody can make lightly, you know, moving places. Uh, so when I mentioned that, there was a couple of people that got a bit ticked with me. And I guess uh, it seems that they're stressed out too over the, over the, the crappy air in this country and you know what's what their kids are exposed to and me bursting this bubble of security kind of irked them in the wrong way i was messaged back later that day uh, and the same person apologized basically saying that same thing that he himself was stressed out and the situation was stressing him out so i fully understand where he's coming from uh you know lives are what they are people have their stresses um, I guess that he lives in Seoul in the capital or city which probably experiences some of the worst pollution in the country and so having a dude like me saying that it doesn't matter what Bangladesh is experiencing I'm concerned with South Korea I guess rubbed him the wrong way no problem we all have our bad days I think this is a pretty majestic building it looks good cars coming in there is a bunch of neighborhoods right around the corner here. This used to be a hill right here where I'm standing. And just a few years ago, this was a hill. There was nothing here, barren land. These neighborhoods behind me right there. And then this hill, perfect place for hiking. Now it's gone. It's replaced by the strong fist of the law. I'm being sarcastic for no apparent reason, just because I can, not because I'm really against this being here. I have absolutely no beef with it here. I think it looks pretty nice. I hope I'll never have to set foot inside though. <laughs> so I don't know if you've watched me, uh, a couple of reports that I made about uh, the taxi drivers. I think it's an ongoing crisis in South Korea. Hey, this is a cool setup. Welcome back to Live in Korea with your host, The Masked crypto father the reason for today's masquerade bad air pollution and who's to blame for it uber i'll probably cut that out that doesn't come out right probably shouldn't be poking fun at this at this moment because uh people are uber pissed uh and uh here's my take on it <clears throat> i watched um so a couple of videos back i posted maybe more than a couple but i posted a couple of videos about the first taxi driver that uh, self-emulated here in South Korea as a result of Uber or um, more likely Kakao trying to unroll a carpooling service here. And then this was in 2018 still, I guess in late of December. And then earlier this year, 2019 in January, I can't, don't know the exact date, but uh, there was another incident with another taxi driver self-emulating. And uh, just yesterday, uh, Asian boss posted a video um, uh, about this topic and uh, having a lot more influence than an average person on YouTube such as myself they were able to get into a taxi cab and interview one of the taxi drivers uh, which probably took him a while I don't assume that there were too many cabbies willing to talk about things and they also were able to sit down with um, uh, oh, I, I didn't see the date label, but I guess it was a chairperson on one of the taxi driving companies. And I sat down with these two fellas and uh, had a little discussion, Q&A, about the situation and why this is happening. The chairman of the company basically said, in a nutshell, that having a company, a car sharing company like Uber or Kakao, actually he was specifically referring to Kakao, he didn't even mention Uber. So uh, it may have been either, you know, uh, not wanting to talk about Uber or simply because Kakao uh, self-driving program, whatever they were trying to, to start here, uh, is actually the perpetrator of this whole problem. He compared the USA to Korea, which is, uh, could be viewed as unreasonable, but like, he does have one point. USA is huge and as such the distances between points A to B's 
are large and as such uh, the USA I guess suffers from a shortage of taxi drivers so having in uh, a company like uber can fill those gaps right providing basically more uh, opportunities for people to catch a ride whether it's a taxi or uber in Korea however uh, the country being significantly smaller uh, yet having 250,000 taxi drivers nationwide in his mind um, that number of taxi drivers uh, is enough to to fill the space there is no need for other companies I just realized there is a big noisy pulley here that was nice where I was maybe we'll go back up there's a bit of noise behind me so I'm gonna tread back up and go to go in front of the courtroom which is nice and quiet so uh, having Korea the small size that it is and having uh, such a num large number of taxi drivers uh, in the view of this uh, the chairman having another car pulling service will basically be unnecessary because he believes that there are enough cabbies to to supply the demand for pulled services the way taxi drivers work in South Korea is they essentially rent the cars from the company from the taxi cam company and the taxi driver is able to work for 12 hours so he's able to drive the taxi for about 12 hours during any I guess 24 hour period and this costs him um, 127,000 won so basically the taxi driver has to pay a rental fee for using the company's car which works out to 127,000 won which is about $125 for any 12 hour period if he's unable to make that money within the 12 hours so if he's unable to recoup his expenses during those 12 hours that he works he has to pay the company out of his own pockets which is understood right the company needs to protect itself but here's my beef the speaker uh, not from the taxi company there was another speaker that was making a public speech the Asian boss showed during a protest um, the speaker was rallying up uh, all the, the taxi drivers, which were, from what I understand, it was like close to 100,000 people, taxi drivers that gathered. I assume they were taxi drivers and supporters, people who may not drive taxis, but they were supporting the cause. And there were about 100,000 people gathered, and this one man was rallying up, uh, saying that uh, having a company like Kakao Carpool, let's call it Carshare, Kakao Carshare, uh, Kakao Carpool coming in <clears throat> would basically annihilate the or, or render the business of taxi drivers unnecessary. And he asked a very important question. Do you call that a shared economy? And I failed to see how the business of taxi driving is a shared economy. I understand that it's somehow sponsored by the government. I don't know exactly how the relationship works, but it's a form of public transportation, right? Similar to buses, I guess. That's what we usually assume. So while the taxi companies are subsidized by the government, they are not entirely public, uh, public domain. They are privately owned to some extent. Again, I don't know the exact details. But whenever a company, a private company, begins to lose money, income they're facing you know facing the possibility of not being needed so obviously they're scared and they will do anything and everything to keep that business running and so part of that is to egg on the drivers who are completely unaware of the fact that they are being duped in a sense being a taxi driver means that you need to be licensed i assume that in order to get the licensing you probably have to pay a certain fee to get that done so number one not everyone can do it and for those who do do it they have to pay a fee which a certain party collects in addition to that every time a taxi driver drives and i don't know if this is all across the the, the border i don't know if it's all taxi drivers that rent these cabs from these companies but i assume that there's a large enough number for them that and very maybe very few taxi drivers who actually own their own cars 
which means that these companies collect a lot of money from these taxi drivers. Now imagine this is like almost $300 per day for a 24 hour period per taxi driver. So if you do the math, this is 250,000 taxi drivers nationwide who pay $300 each and every single day for running a taxi. Is that three quarters of a million dollars each day? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what will happen, happen to a company who loses this kind of income? Of course they're scared. Of course they will egg on all these taxi drivers who are dependent apparently on these taxi companies. When it's really the other way around. Taxi companies are dependent on the services of these taxi drivers. If these taxi drivers decided to stop driving taxis and start operating their own vehicles for which they only need to pay in order to purchase the vehicle and then they own the vehicle, they don't need any uh, specific licensing <clears throat> unless the Cacao Carpool decides to provide them with some kind of licensing. You know, I think in the end this would be a much better deal for, for these people. Rather than having to drive taxis, they could just run their own business because that's what shared economy is. Right now, the taxi drivers, whatever this dude on the podium said, um, the taxi companies are not part of the shared economy. Or am I wrong in saying this? Correct me if I'm wrong. This is my take on it. I'm gonna make my way back home. Uh, steer clear of the sun so you can see my face. My beautiful masked face. And again, it's shocking to me to see that nobody's wearing masks. Am I the doofus? I mean, look at this air. You can see it just standing here, it's hazy. Look, can you see the haze? You can't? You must. Right there, right there, it's hazy as heck. Are people in denial? Or am I paranoid and oversensitive? There's a security guard, he's standing with a mask. He knows. There's cars driving back and forth. So you get fumes from the cars and you get fumes from the factories and the air. People need immediate gratification. Uh, everybody needs immediate results. And if I don't drop dead on the spot as a result of me not wearing a mask today, then that can't be that bad. If it only means that I inhale poison for a day, and it shortens my life by a day, you know, 40, 60 years from now, then maybe that's not such a big deal. And I think this is the perception that most people have, because that's the perception I used to have a lot of the times, thinking that, you know, whatever doesn't kill me today, well, if it kills me 20 years from now on, that's not really something that I consider right now, this moment. Which is uh, why most people, I think, don't take the necessary precautions because the results are so far in the future that most people don't really make that connection. Not until it happens. And then when they're 50 and 60 and they start complaining from cancer this, cancer that, then you've got companies saying that it's from gas or it's from the car pollution and whatever else. But by that time it's too late because you're already dying. On that happy note, this is a very good sandwich place. It's cheese and stuff. I was gonna go in, but it looks like they're closed. <laughs> ah, crap. <laughs>